So how do you know that you're actually in autophagy? I mean, you fast, you restrict your calories, you do crazy amounts of exercise and do everything else right. But how do you know that you get the health benefits of autophagy? That's a very good question. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what are the signs of autophagy and how do you know whether or not you're in autophagy? Get to the chopper! Let's go through some basics. Autophagy is a metabolic process or a mechanism by which your cells assemble and recycle themselves. It converts cellular debris into energy that gets used for survival. Autophagy gets activated primarily when you're experiencing energy deprivation and stress such as while fasting or exercising. As your body becomes depleted of certain nutrients, then it's going to gradually start increasing autophagy as a way of coping with the stress and using the backup fuel that you have. Autophagy can be monitored by two different approaches. One, direct observation of autophagy-related structures and their fate. And two, quantification of autophagy lysosome-dependent degradation of proteins and organelles. Most of the measurements of autophagy are done in other animals, not humans, which is why it's difficult to know how different metabolic pathways and cellular processes manifest themselves in humans. Currently, we don't really have anything to directly measure autophagy in real time. You would probably have to take a muscle biopsy and look at the amount of autophagy proteins in that tissue. To accurately estimate autophagic activity, it's essential to determine autophagic flux, which is defined as the amount of autophagic degradation. That process is still complicated even in cultured cells, and is currently impractical in humans. So, does it mean that autophagy is nonsense, that you can't even know if you are in autophagy? Oh, Not really, because we can measure it, and we can look at it, it's just that it's somewhat difficult to do with, you know, the equipment that you have in your home. But there are still some mechanistic principles that we know regulate the process of autophagy that indirectly tell whether or not you are in autophagy. Autophagy is regulated most by the mTOR and AMPK pathways. To trigger autophagic cell turnover, you need to increase AMPK and cause cellular stress. Being anabolic and growing will inhibit autophagy by raising mTOR through the insulin IGF-1 signaling pathway. To know whether or not you're more anabolic or catabolic or more mTOR or AMPK activated, you can measure insulin to glucagon ratio. Both insulin and glucagon are important for your body's homeostasis and survival. They will either make you store energy and repair vital tissues, which is anabolism, or break down backup storage so that you would survive, which is catabolism. In general, an increase in insulin-glucagon ratio is associated with more anabolism and mTOR, which equals weight gain, muscle growth, fat storage, hyperinsulinemia, and a higher risk of hypoglycemia. A reduced insulin-glucagon ratio promotes catabolism, fat loss, AMPK and autophagy. To know what's your insulin glucagon ratio, you can take a blood test from your medical doctor. However, you can also measure that at home by looking at your glucose ketone index. The glucose ketone index or GKI is a number between the relationship of your ketones and glucose levels. It can help to monitor your general health in relation to your blood glucose levels. The glucose ketone index formula goes like this. First, you measure your blood glucose by pricking your finger. Then you write down the number you get. Second, measure your blood ketones by pricking your finger again and write down the number you get. Third, divide your blood glucose number by 18. If your device is using milligrams per deciliter, then dividing that with 18 converts it over to millimoles per liter. If your device is already showing millimoles per liter, then you don't need to divide anything and you can skip this step. Fourth, divide your result from the previous step by your ketone numbers. And five, the end result is your glucose ketone index. In general, having a glucose ketone index below three indicates high levels of ketosis in relation to low levels of glucose. Three to six shows moderate ketosis and six to nine is mild ketosis. Anything above 9 and 10 is no ketosis and no autophagy. The glucose ketone index is going to show you what's your insulin to glucagon ratio in regards to being ketotic and catabolic. A lower glucose ketone index will indicate more ketosis, lower blood sugar, lower insulin, more AMPK and therefore more autophagy as well. Versus a higher glucose ketone index shows no ketosis, higher blood sugar, higher mTOR, less AMPK, and therefore less autophagy as well. If you combine this result of a lower insulin to glucagon ratio, then you can predict the amount of autophagy you're in, as long as you're still in a fast state. 
because that's one of the prerequisites that probably need to happen. You need to be fasting with a low glucose ketone index to know whether or not you're in autophagy or not. If you're eating but your glucose ketone index is low, then it just means that you're in ketosis, but you're not in esophagy because you're eating calories, which will then inhibit esophagy. Wait a minute. This is not the best and most perfect way of looking at it, but it's the best you got, and you can use it at your home convenience. Disappointed! So here are some more signs of esophagy. Low blood glucose. When your blood sugar drops, the body responds by raising cortisol, growth hormone and ketones. This promotes fat oxidation and ketosis, which would enable the beginning of autophagy. How low your blood sugar needs to be is very subjective and context dependent, but generally you'd probably have to drop below 70 mg per deciliter, which is what would happen on a long extended fast. Secondly, low insulin and IGFN signaling. High fasting insulin is associated with metabolic syndrome and diabetes, which happen due to energy excess. Furthermore, a lower insulin IGF-1 signal indicates more autophagy because of decreased nutrient signaling. Fasting, low-carb diets and exercise all stimulate autophagy a bit and they also reduce insulin IGF-1. Generally, a fasting insulin at less than 25 is considered normal, but I would say that for autophagy, you would probably have to be less than 15 or 20. Weight loss. The process of autophagy is involved in fat oxidation as well, in which it's called lipophagy. When you are fasting, then you will lose weight, and that also probably means that you have higher autophagy. However, when you're losing weight without fasting, then it also probably means that you're in higher basal autophagy because you're in calorie restriction and therefore your energy stores are being somewhat depleted. Muscle loss. Autophagy protects against age-related dysfunction and sarcopenia by degrading misfolded proteins and organelles. The problem is that if you're fasting or under eating for too long, then you will inevitably start to break down your own muscle tissue. Autophagy is a good thing for protecting against muscle catabolism, but too much of it will still lead to sarcopenia and muscle loss. How much autophagy is too much is very subjective, but I would say that the benefits of autophagy tend to hit the point of diminishing returns around day 3 to 5, so definitely there's no real reason to be fasting any longer than that. And lastly, skin health. Wrinkles and skin damage happen as a result of aging and oxidative stress. It can also trigger autophagy in the skin fibroblasts and thus promote skin health. Your skin reflects the health of your gut and digestion. With fasting, your skin would clear up without using any products or creams. A lot of people have been asking, what's my skincare routine and what kind of products do I use? Well, the answer is, it's just fasting and eating an anti-inflammatory diet because I literally don't use anything. I only wash my face with water, regular water and nothing else. It's just that autophagy and fasting tend to keep my skin quite clear and uh, also the digestion and health are just on point. Feel how soft my skin is. Now, all of these variables, they're not 100% accurate and they don't necessarily always mean autophagy, but they can be useful for just indicating that your body is going through some autophaging processes and is using it. You don't want to be in autophagy all the time either. You want to balance it with proper nutrition, getting enough exercise, sunlight, and getting all the essential nutrients from your diet. If you want to know how to cycle autophagy and activate it when it is beneficial, then check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. Get to the chopper!